Hi, everybody. Welcome. I am Emily, the Fine Art Medium, and today we have Catalina, aka Moonlight Awakening. Whee! Hello, everyone. Yes. And so uh, we're going to be doing a past life reading for her. And technically, I already did it. I just have my notes that I'm going to relate to her and give her her results. Hopefully, you know, maybe you can validate some of this stuff. If not, that is a-okay. This is just for fun. <laughs> So just a quick like thing for you. I did put some drawings on here for reference because I had to, I drew uh, some things I didn't know what they were. And sometimes when I don't know what a thing is, I'll draw it and then we can try to figure it out together or not. I don't know if we don't know what it is. We don't know what it is, but I'm hoping you know what it is. Hopefully. <laughs> also, um, I like to have the guest kind of like give out their socials so everyone knows where to find them. So if you want to, you know, give out your socials, your Instagram, where people can find you, you know, I'll also insert it in the video. But, you know, if you want to do that now. Yes, um, I do have a YouTube channel called Moonlight Awakening. I also have an Instagram Moonlight Awakens 11. Um, I also make handmade jewelry. So I have another Instagram, Moonlight Awakening Creations. Mm -hmm. So yes, I have a little bit of that great stuff. So yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, when we're done with this, just give me all your links or if you have a link tree or what have you, and then I'll put it in the video, kind of like how I did with Dead Serious Investigations. I'll have it in the video and in the description below. So, yay. Okay. Are you ready for your results? Because I'm excited. So <clears throat> just to kind of tell people how I do these past life readings. Usually I'll go into a meditation. And for Catalina, I think I started the meditation around, I want to say like 12 in the afternoon. And it kind of went really deep to where I fell asleep. And then I astral projected, which then I think I got out of it around, I want to say like three. <laughs> so I was there for like three or so hours doing this meditation and um I like to hold a rose quartz crystal because you know it ampl amplifies the energy and in my intentions but also because I am clairsentient it's like I'm connected to everything because you know the crystal's been in the ground for millions of years so I feel like everything is connected and then it I don't know I just visualize like roots going throughout the world and I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I kind of do that. But so the first thing, meditation, first impressions. Um, so during the first few minutes of meditation, I began picking up, I think, recent activities of what you were doing. I'm I'm guessing that's what it was. And I think it had to do with like your travels to Mexico. If I'm wrong, let me know. It's fine. <laughs> but so you know, I kept seeing a desert and then it zoomed out to you being in a moving car and then seeing that desert go by to eventually being near like this long chain link fence. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think it's just them showing me like you going to Mexico. Did you drive there? You or did you? Mm, no, well, I got there. First, I, I arrived to Mexico in a plane and then I came back on the bus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that might make sense then. So, yeah. And I live in Arizona, so clearly it's a desert. So. It's a desert. Okay. Is there, I guess there is not a border. I guess you're not bordering Mexico. It is. 
there is a border there. Yeah, okay. you see it before you go into the okay. United States or Mexico, whichever. Mm -hmm. Okay, wasn't sure. <laughs> All right, so once we got past that, um, I see you in this, it almost like looked like a hut kind of house with straw on a roof or a, with a wooden porch or walkway. All right, so the next thing I see is a large rectangular wooden structure and I drew it so it's on the notes that I sent you if you need to look at that. But I don't know what it was, but it almost looked like kind of, I don't want to say like a stage kind of thing. All I know is like you had the long building and then on the long sides of the walls were these balconies and it was like they could look over and down. So I don't know what that was, but they showed that to me and I don't know why. Oh, Spirit did tell me that you are like directly descended from natives. Do you know if that's true? Um, I have to because, okay, so because my parents are from Mexico and part of my my grandma's side, they're more like native mm -hmm. compared to my grandpa. They're more like Spaniards. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so I feel like there's definitely tribal in that yeah. part. So yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because they told me that and then I saw like the patterns, like the bright fabric patterns with the bright, you know, colors and shapes and stuff. And then I saw a group of people dancing around a campfire. But um, so that to me is kind of like when I think of natives, I think of like the rituals they do around campfires. So now we're going to be leaning into the whole like past life thing. So so the first thing that spirit showed me was like this old bar tavern thing that was made of wood um, it looked like one of the ones from Game of Thrones or The Witcher. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. The Witcher, yeah. I yeah. watched The Witcher. <laughs> so you know what the the bar taverns look like. It's all wood. Everything's glass. There's like no electricity. Um, it gave me vibes from the 1400s to 1500s. And I think that's why they're showing that to me because it's like a time like thing to go as a reference. And then we enter the next meditation phase, which is where I'm in there deep. So this is where I'm getting more um, intricate details. So the first part of this meditation where I'm starting to get really sleepy, of course. And so, like I said, things are becoming more vivid and detailed. But the first thing I saw very vividly was this brownish red terracotta looking pot that looked upside down with the U shape. I drew a picture of it. Um, I don't know, but it had like this U cut out and then at the top was like a hole where like heat or smoke could escape out of. I don't know. It could be like a tool that was used during that time. Um, I think it was. I don't know if it was for like pottery or cooking since they didn't have like electricity and stuff. So I'm wondering if it's a kiln. I'm I'm suspecting, suspecting it's a type of kiln. I don't know. I know it's hard to validate the past life stuff because you know obviously you weren't alive then. Um. So all right, spirit then showed me multiple times these long flights of stone stairs. Um. Then they took me on a trip to where I was on a tropical river and looking through the eyes of someone rowing down in a wooden canoe-like boat. Mm -hmm. I saw tons of tropical plants, trees, animals, and had this slight fear falling into the river because of all the like dangerous animals that lurk in there. Um, do you know if there's piranhas? Yeah. Well, I guess you wouldn't. Probably. It, I feel like in the Amazon River, there's piranhas. I don't know why but I feel like there are or at least deadly animals that would you know cause a problem um and then Claire audiently I heard a female voice say uh kind of like a valley girl voice they had this crazy pocket system I don't it was so weird I don't know but it kind of reminded me of how some of the people would travel with like alpaca and llama so it's kind of like they're giving me clues and I'm trying to put it together and whatnot. 
But so <laughs> I see a black, gray, and white snake coil around the plant. So I'm starting to see like the wildlife that's in the area. And then I go into the full astral projection where I'm asleep. And then I'm just like out of my body fully and fully focusing on the uh, area around me. And so um, I am taken to where I'm surrounded by stone ruins. And this is where I learn that I'm standing on one of the remains of the lost empires of South America or Central America. I asked my guides which one, and I distinctly remember hearing Peru. Do you have any ancestors in Peru? I just got the chills too. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't know. No? Okay, that's okay. So almost immediately, I remember the Amazon rainforest in the river which leads me to believe that you had a past life from the Incan empire. Yeah, wow. <laughs> it was, yeah. And it makes sense too, because remember the stairs I kept seeing? Their pyramids have the layers that look like stairs. Yeah, and I remember like going down the river and then the forest and then looking for food and other necessities. So then this is where we get to the card validation once I wake up, I go to my cards and, you know, the first cards that come out are based off of religion. So it is a nature-based faith. Um, we have religious fanatic. That's what the card calls it. But to me, when I see religious fanatic, I think someone that strictly follows a religious practice. Um, and then I see ritual priest, which if you don't know anything about Incan empire, they did like all those rituals and they had the uh human sacrifices yeah well you know you can't control what happened right but so this again is slowly adding up to what my guides were telling me and the incan empire was solely based off of nature worship um they had complex ceremonies practices and animistic beliefs so that's kind of like um giving objects um, like qualities of, it's almost like personification, but these objects have like abilities and powers and things. So then we have secret society, but under the other category, which also makes sense because, you know, in this, uh, empire, the, um, which Ma calls it the priests in the religion, the people who control the ceremonies in the religion kind of have like their own sector in that empire. So to me, that made sense. And they have their own hierarchy within there. So that is very important because the leadership card did come out and the ritual priest oversaw healing the sick and was said to have a direct line to the gods because their ability to heal came from them. And then additionally, they took care of the temples, took part in confidential decisions and presenting the sacrificial rituals. I also uh, had this feeling that as a child, you did a lot of like hunting and gathering and things. So it would make sense as to why like we have the explorer card that popped out. Um, yeah. And also, if you have to look for herbs and things for medicine and healing people and the sick, again, that would also make sense. As for the location, and this is interesting, Central and South America card popped out. So that, again, validates what I saw and heard from my guides. And the time period card indicated early modern age. So, of course, I had to Google that because I wasn't sure what time period that was. And it said it starts from the 14 to 1500s and ends around the 1800s. So then if, you know, as I did the digging, I went to see like when the Incan Empire, you know, kind of began and fell and it began around the 1200s. But then, you know, it collapsed around 1533 AD. So that actually when you put the times together, the official time period from this past life was around 14 to 1500s. So, yeah. And then you were a male. 
you were a male who was married to your uh, companion. So you had a really good love life. You were happy in that department. Um, so then we get to the traumas and specifically it pointed to psychological and verbal or and or verbal abuse but I feel like it was more a psychological trauma because you know you're healing the sick you're part of the community you get to know these people and then all of a sudden you know you have people die or it's like you know someone for a long time and then oh no you gotta sacrifice them it's very traumatic I feel as like a human being having to go through that so um yes so one of your main lessons of that lifetime had to do with power and not letting it go to your head. And I feel like in this lifetime, it was, or I should say, you were very successful at it. And, you know, you got through that lesson, like, good. <laughs> and then you died at an old ripe age. So unfortunately, I only had one past life. And that is pretty much all that I got from that. So do you have any questions, comments, concerns? I don't know, anything you want to add or validate or, I mean. Yes. Um, you know, after my recent breakup, I felt like I needed to do like the fire ceremony. Mm -hmm. so I was like, you know, I need to like write it down and just let it burn and mm -hmm. lately also been feeling like I have this fire inside of me like or like I just want to imagine or I can imagine myself being danced with fire around me like that would mm -hmm. be so cool to do and I've been wanting to do something like fire related that I just want to dance with fire mm -hmm. I'm a water element but just bring in the fire you mm -hmm. know I've been wanting to do that to anything related to that so that makes sense and and then um the herbs yeah definitely the herbs for sure um when I got sick I had to really dig into herbs and after that I was like I've been in this rabbit hole of herbs only so that makes sense while I'm tapping in finally into that too mm -hmm. mm, obviously I got the chills when you said Peru and then when you said the leadership that was so funny too because like I have keep having dreams oh two 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 <laughs> having <laughs> <laughs> cool I keep having like like dreams of me being a leader to people or mm -hmm. like you know all the time like it could be like fighting for justice whatever yeah and um and yeah and then leadership and I did get the chills you know when you said about Peru and I was like whoa you know mm -hmm. like I need to read about Peru then. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting. I forgot to say this. So the area in which you lived was the Antisuyo, which is the northern region of Peru near the Amazon rainforest and Amazon River, because the Incan Empire actually started at kind of like the beginning of Peru. And then it went down like the side of, you know, how where Peru is. But yeah, so you were in the northern part of Peru interesting then I need to eventually go to Peru <laughs> get those soul fragments back to me so pretty much you're saying like I did I was like a priest you were a ritual priest okay okay mm -hmm. huh. yeah I could see the psychological <laughs> yeah um, I feel like too like I don't know specifically because I haven't like looked in to like your abilities and stuff do you know what uh clear abilities you have um well I'm good at like sensing people like oh maybe she's not feeling good or like, okay something. so empathic but then but if I really try to tune in I might sometimes I get thoughts okay like, clear cognizant. Like, boom this is where it's at or something yeah. like okay like, you're clear cognizant too mm -hmm. I feel like if you went to like the ruins up in Peru, I feel like you might get some impressions off of it. It's interesting too, because I also have a past life down in that area. It's like me 
chastity and now you I want I feel like we might have known each other in a past life in that past life probably I won't be surprised either you know and and I was laughing when when you said about the bright colors I'm like I'm wearing a bright color today yeah Yeah. but that was kind of funny too Mm -hmm. um and then um I'm looking at the other picture the second image so that would be like the terracotta looking thing that look I think that might be a kiln I should google what old kilns look like so something you cooked in there like maybe tea or food I'm thinking so I'm thinking it might be like a way to cook food or make pottery okay yep that's exactly what it is there's a video on here of a guy hold on my mud it's a mud kiln that's what it is it's a mud kiln with this guy here right yeah the camera's not gonna focus but it's like he's (laughs) standing at a mud kiln and that's exactly what it looks like okay so it's to make pottery oh so it's like a dome yeah so i may maybe saying that i used to make pottery mud kiln um, um, maybe I put stuff in it. I mean, I feel like I feel like many people did it because they needed to hold herbs and stuff. And which, if you were helping the sick and whatnot, you would have had to put your herbs in something and to um, store them or mix them. Yeah, you this that makes sense. I want to mm-hmm. show you the photo though, because now I'm like shook. I am shook because I didn't know what it was. Because I was thinking like, well, if it's something related to making clay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it's it's to make pottery, to make bricks. Um, Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's crazy. (laughs) Yeah, because I was going to say in high school, I took like a ceramics class. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wonder that's like that's you know. interesting because I bet you there's a lot of correlations in your l- past life that are now like associated with your current life so like the whole herbal thing that you were talking about makes sense the um wanting to try pottery makes sense like doing that in school um I mean I'm trying to think what else it kind of makes sense with the religion, not the the uh, sacrifice part, but like nature based religion. Are you kind of like? I mean, I I have an idea of what your what you practice, but it deals with a lot of nature, right? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you know, when I go like lately, I wait till like eight p.m. to put my feet on the dirt. Mm-hmm. you know my bare feet and just walk on it like every morning I'm like you know saying thank you to the sun you know Which, like, you know Peru and the Incan empire they had a sun god like yeah okay <laughs> so I feel like you're drawing some things from your past life here yeah yeah for sure like and um I, like I'm literally into like ceremonies I want to do more and Mm -hmm. and I just need to really dig deep into that because like you said religion practice because I'm really into it and that what makes me feel like more of me yeah you know yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah I'm definitely seeing some similarities here um let me see I had my summary at the bottom so we don't have to go through and try to like pick apart the notes here oh yeah so this priest will have this headpiece on his head yeah you see like the headpiece on his head yeah yeah like I was gonna say don't you wear a lot of (laughs) headpieces that's why (laughs) that's why I was like wait a minute because lately I've been obsessed with like headpieces big ones especially big ones. yeah it's like wait a minute so that's why it just came to me right now like was he here how if his head pee was huge or like something in the ceremony yeah. um usually they have yeah the the big head pieces yeah that's okay. interesting 
Okay, mine is blown. My mind is blown. <laughs> Yeah, mine too. Oh, what about a staff, like a little? I don't know. That's I don't one know. of those things we'll have to research. Do you have okay. a staff too? No, but because I want to make one out of like a selenite wand. I want to add a bunch of crystals on it. Yeah. Make this wand kind of thing. So I was wondering like if he had like, because mm -hmm. I know we, I know we have magical tools, you know, So like, I wonder if he had it or maybe that's some other life or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But like, I was just wondering that too, because I'm going to, I, I want to start making my own. I already have the stuff. I just need to put it all together. Yeah. So um, I just typed it in Google and it says, let this legend also incorporates the golden staff, which is thought to have been given to Monko Kapak by his, I don't like when It's like it doesn't finish the sentence. Hold up. And they wear a lot a lot of gold, right? Yeah. Because I've been obsessed with the color gold. Like, I want to wear, like, a gold outfit. Like, gold, yeah. gold. Well, if you think about it, the Spaniards came and invaded that empire because of the riches that they had. Hmm. So if you if you have relatives that are from Spain, I know. <laughs> and what if one of those relatives were part of the colonies or settlers from Spain? You know what I mean? Because if the Spaniards invaded the Incan empires, or yeah, from Peru, and yeah, that could make sense. I mean, there's a lot of uh Spain colonies and uh settlers that moved to that area so and you know you have descendants from Spain so I don't think it's a far jump to say <laughs> that <laughs> you could have descendants that were of that time period so mm -hmm. what about exploring and like a genuine curiosity to go out on adventures and things I feel like you would be very adventurous <laughs> yeah I'm laughing <laughs> yeah I think because like ever since I try to be more on my own everywhere I go like if I'm saying with my mom with my sister yeah. traveling to Mexico I'm like I need to just go somewhere else and like what's what does this place have mm -hmm. Let me over there mm -hmm. like you take a walk and see where it will, it will lead me yeah so I'm very into that since like last year or the year after that I've been feeling like man I just want to keep exploring seeing things you know just the sense of wonder very curiosity you know yeah it's weird because I feel similar because it's like I hate being in the house I just want to live outside for the rest of my life whether it's like in a little tent or whatever like I just want to be outside and not have this like I don't want to have modern day houses I don't want to have all this technology I feel like I was born in the wrong era I don't know if you've ever felt like that but I felt I just feel like there's just too much and I like less and not having guns and just doing sword fighting and you know stuff like that Yeah, going back to the simpler, simple ways. Yeah. You know, like in Mexico, like some people have their kitchens outside. They don't really have a, a full wall. So mm -hmm. you can't, like, you're like half inside, half outside. So you can kind of see here the birdies, you know, the pretty scenery. Oh, it was very interesting to go back, to go back after seven years, you know. It just, I felt like I went in the middle of nowhere. But not really, but because I had no phone service, like I couldn't go. I was, I feel like I got disconnected from everything. So just like me and just what's here. Yeah. Really helped me that's, to really see everything. And yeah, that's yeah. interesting about the kitchens. I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Certain things are outside and stuff like that. So it was nice to finally like see some, you know, you're seeing things differently to how yeah. I, different people live in other countries and stuff. I guess so, they don't get a lot of storms then right because if they did they wouldn't be able to cook right 
No, no, it's you still get a a bad storm. Okay, I was like, <laughs> they, they, they know how to fix it good, you know, like so it's good. I don't know. Okay, so, how do they do it? But but yeah, mm. but hey, they they manage so. Yeah. yeah. So the next part of this, I figured we could talk about like recent uh paranormal experiences. Do you have any recent ones to share? Okay. Yes. So when I went to Mexico, okay. So I went to visit my childhood home. Okay. And how I'm 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 always curious, like, because in that house years ago when I was like a teenager, no, well, I was 17 at the time, there was a, activity happening there. So when I recently went, I asked my cousin, because one of my cousins is living there with his wife, a new baby. Okay. They're like renting the place. Hmm. Okay. So anyway, I was like, so have you guys seen anything? And like, they're like, yes, actually, um, he said like one of his brothers saw like, because my grandma died there. So she's like, my they they saw her, her white spirit going through the hallway, through the kitchen. I was like, oh my God. Oh. And he told me like all these goosebumps were all over my arm. I mean, it was just, it's just so crazy. Even years ago, like, like I'm pretty sure my baby cousin no I should say niece I don't know if she's still grows up there I won't be surprised she's gonna start seeing our grandma or our grandpa because I, I will get crazy things there like they even said the curtains will be like flowing like that and there's no wind everything's dead mm-hmm. but you see the curtains sometimes like move like crazy like that so there's mm-hmm. definitely something there in my grandma's house or my mom's house because now it's my mom's house was passed down to me. Wow, that's crazy. I don't think like, like I don't think I've ever seen apparitions of deceased family members. I've all o- I've always only seen them like through my third eye. So it's kind of interesting hearing the different perspectives of how like one would see family members and whatnot that have been deceased. So interesting but the thing is he want like i want to see you he puts yeah. it out there i want to see you and clearly do there it is yeah you know? and i will have this other thing where like it was the middle of the nighttime i couldn't sleep that was like when i when i showed up over there when i was 17 years old mm-hmm. i was like i couldn't sleep i don't know i just felt something but like not in the room but I'm like something was happening I don't know I opened my eyes and the the crack that I could see through the living room it was bright like it was bright white like the whole room lit up white mm-hmm. I was like where are the lights coming from there yeah. everybody's dead asleep it's like the room just light up white and then I closed my eyes because kind of you know you don't know what's happening kind of scares you mm-hmm. I close my eyes when I open it it go back to the normal color of mm-hmm. a dark I was like, what the hell was that? And the thing is, my gr- my aunt and uncle were sleeping there. My baby cousin, my other little cousin. So it's like, like, did they even see the bright light? But I'm like, that has to be a manifestation of something. Because the whole, it looked like the whole room was lit up. But no, everybody, everybody was asleep. Mm-hmm. So I was like, whoa, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> So that's good that it was a bright white light because <laughs> usually when it comes to bright white lights, that has to do with like benevolent or like good beings. So it could just be, you know, spirit making themselves known and being like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a really neat experience. I feel like too, I have similar like experiences when it comes to like sleeping and then waking up to like a light. And it's usually like a bright white light. And then I'll like fall back asleep and then I'll forget about it for a while and then I'll remember it. But yeah, that's very lit, literally like pun intended for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I know that house is haunted with, but good spirits though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And seeing the grandmother kind of like going whoop, it kind of gives me like residual hauntings or like because they probably I just I don't know it just feels like 
their energy is so ingrained into that space that it's like they probably had their own um I don't want to say ritual but it's like the the things that they do every day that's the same if that makes sense and so I feel like the house kind of absorbed it and so it's like her doing her daily routine yeah sense no no yeah I figure that because like that house been there for years mm-hmm. I grew up there a bunch of my cousins nephews it would be a place that everybody will go into so I know there's a lot of activity like me there my energy their energy everybody's you know mm-hmm. so I know like there's a lot of like built up energy there for sure mm-hmm. it's so, kind of, I was gonna say it's kind of cool too that because you had multiple generations of family members living there that it's all family spirits so that's kind of like a relief I don't know do do you know of any other people besides family members live there I'm just curious um well in that house yes some a doctor they barely rented it out like barely a couple of months they will move out but it was mostly family yeah so it's kind of like a safe space too it's like sure it's haunted but at least it's haunted by family members so I I don't know I kind of find that really interesting and kind of cool I have astro experience I have many but I don't know what I feel like I'm I can't see what's happening like I feel like I'm flying or falling or I, yeah. I, what's happening I was like please show me what's happening mm-hmm. like I could I know I could feel things because sometimes I look let me touch yeah things. I can feel things I think I can hear things but I can't see everything's pitch black and it frustrates me because I want to freaking see yeah where am I going what's happening so it's like mm-hmm. and it's been happening for years I was like and it's still like what's do, going on <laughs> do you meditate regularly like when I'm here my parents house is very hard but other than that like I will always meditate but the thing is it's it's like, it's still like, what the heck? Yeah. Here, even mm-hmm. if I'm meditating, I don't know, maybe just, maybe I need to remove some blockages or, or like, cause sometimes you put like an expectations how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And I'm really expecting it to be like that. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, that way. is the number one reason as to why many people are blocked is because their ego aka they let their expectations kind of run rampant and when things don't happen the way they expect them to then they miss out on the little details so it's kind of like when you go through your meditations or astral projection kind of go with a blank slate and then when things happen do it from the perspective of like okay this is happening and you know, kind of analyze it. Maybe if you can write it down so you can go back and then analyze the things that are going on. Because when I first started, I had this expectation of how like my abilities would be or how I would experience things. And it made it really difficult to understand what was going on. And like, for example, I expected my clairvoyance to be like seeing things right with my eyeballs, but that's not really how it is. 99% of the time it's through your third eye and, you know, it's going to be faint impressions on your mind of images and things like that. So it's kind of like, don't have any expectations when you are doing these things or trying to use abilities and just let things happen as they do and record it. I mean, that's all you can really do and then go back and analyze it. Okay. Yeah. Cause I remember one time, but I, I, I saw myself levitating on top of my bed. I was like, please let me get back to that. How do I get, <laughs> you know? But that was the first time ever something like finally something I got something out of it. But yeah, and that was it. I just remember that levitating. I was like, whoa, look at me, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, how can I get back to that scene? Something like, but anyway, but you're right. Expectations, just throw them out. Yeah, the it's window. like expectations versus reality. 
And then, yeah, it just messes everything up. Two, grounding yourself is really good. And I know you're already doing that. So yay. <laughs> um, I think meditating outside would help you too. And removing anything that could distract you. So when I do my meditations, I make sure my phone is on do not disturb because if it rings, it's going to distract me and then I'm going to lose everything that I've been trying to do. And, you know, if you're living with other people, it's hard because, you know, they're making noise. They're trying to talk to you. You need to have like your own little space so you can focus in the quiet. So I think if you put yourself in a situation where you're not distracted by anybody or anything, I think it'll be more successful for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to do it when I'm not in my parents' house too much, have too much distraction. So yeah. once I'm somewhere else, then I'll mm -hmm. practice that. And then the blockages. I feel like the blockages for you are, are more just your expectations and your ego getting in the way. Because I think once you move past that, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, I think I need to like um, talk to my higher self about it and say, okay, so if I do ask to travel at night or whatever, remove my ego out of the way mm -hmm. so you can help me or see yeah. or whatever, just set an intention before I go to see sleep or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I feel like too, for me, um, recording everything, whether it's dreams or astral realm experiences or paranormal experiences, if you write them all down, you'll notice that your dreams are going to become more vivid and your astral realm experiences too. Cause I used to go from like three, three sentences and now it's like pages and pages of notes just for astral realm experiences. Um, do you have any, I feel like, do you have any black tourmaline? Yes, I have a little piece. Like that. That's fine. When you do your meditations, put it on your third eye so it can cleanse your third eye because sometimes it builds up, you know, negative energy, kind of like how all our chakras can do that. And if you put it on your third eye, it'll help cleanse it. And at first it might feel weird. Sometimes it might hurt. It depends on the person. Um, for me, it felt a little throbby, but it didn't really hurt. But then, you know, once I do that periodically, it helps clear it out and makes things more vivid. So I would try that too. Yeah, I'll definitely do that for sure. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, when you go to sleep, try like go falling asleep with it on your third eye and see what happens. I'm just curious if it'll, if it'll work that way for you. And if it stays there, I don't know. Yeah, if it stays there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tossing and turning. Is there anything you wanted to ask or talk about? Ah, uh, well, so a few years, this is with extraterrestrials three or two years ago. It didn't happen that long ago, but I was like, I was like laying in bed and then I was like, I felt like I was like being lifted. I was still laying down, but I feel like I was being lifted like that. Yeah. And like, and then I felt like I was in a metal bed. I was like, I'm in a spaceship because I can't, because you can feel when you're like somewhere. Yeah. You know? So I was feeling, I'm in that, and I could feel like I was in a metal bed. I could see this bright, like there was like this light light mm -hmm. like tell you this light would like I can barely see something from a third eye barely something mm -hmm. you know, I can see this white coat this like this light shine upon me like that because while I was laying down this metal bed mm -hmm. and then I saw this like darkest silhouette I couldn't really see exactly what it was because I could barely see through what was happening mm -hmm. in my brain side but this like tall silhouette. I was like, I wonder if that's a ET or maybe a spirit guy. Like, hey, you're okay, you're fine. And I was like, I was, that was the the most crazy happened when I was like 
Mm -hmm. when I went on a spaceship that I remember that I finally remembered yeah and I could feel like they were doing something because I could feel like all this energy mm -hmm. like on my crown but it wasn't hurting mm -hmm. it was I, I didn't feel nothing it would like that felt like hurt no nothing it would just feel like a lot of shh, shh. so they were yeah. definitely doing something through a machine I feel like it had to be through a machine that's what I'm that's mm -hmm. what I think so it was just like so far, that was the most craziest recent experience that I remember. Mm -hmm. like, wow. I'm pretty sure I've been to more spaceships, but other than that, like, that's the only ones I could recollect. Yeah. Yeah, I've had an experience on, like, I actually projected on a spacecraft that was in space, and I remember this uh person, he looked human, and he had somewhat of an Australian kind of accent, and he's like, how did you get here? You're not supposed to be here. And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm here. And then I remember then going to the uh, planet that my soul was from. And that was a wicked experience. But yeah, I've been on a spacecraft. And it's like nothing that I've seen in the movies. Like, they're similar, but it's like, not the same. But so I feel like, extraterrestrials and then you have um benevolent or malevolent beings it's like you have all these kinds of beings and some of them kind of intermingle and I feel like because I'm I'm trying to tap in to see if I can see what you saw and I know some of the being oh, okay I understand so that experience it looks like they were trying to understand your consciousness because ETs are very curious of our souls and all that. And I can't remember who I was talking to about this. I feel like it was Chastity or Duran. It, it was either one of them or both of them. But, you know, ETs are very curious of how uh, humanity's souls are. And so they try to study that because it's not like anything else in the universe I suppose but so that is what it feels like it's like they're trying to study you but they're not doing it in a bad way yeah because if your immediate immediate like feeling was calmness and you're not afraid to me that tells me that it wasn't evil or malevolent it was just like hey okay yeah because yeah. I was I wasn't no, it didn't. I had no pain, so there yeah. was. I felt fine. Yeah, so you, it, you weren't scared or anything. At first, I was like, what the heck? But I was like, wait a minute. I think at first, I was like, well, maybe yeah, it's, it's 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 natural to be like, what's going on? But yeah, yeah. I was bit, but I was like, oh, can I go again? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it was like per se a negative experience I just feel like some beings are curious and they try to study us I mean yeah. obviously there are some ETs that are nasty and do things to people that are awful but yeah. I feel like this was the situation yeah, yeah. okay I think that's <laughs> yeah okay yeah so okay thank you Catalina so much for joining me this was a fun experience um, I feel like you need to do one of those DNA tests to see you need to at some point in your life. The ones, you know, it's like 23 and me, and then they show you like where your uh ancestors are from through your uh how did they do it? I think I had a spit in a tube. They analyze your DNA to see where your ancestors are from one day. I'm just saying it's worth it. But anyway, thank you so much. For joining today it was a fun experience hopefully i don't know you gained something from this experience so yeah well, for sure yeah I, if i have a dream about it that's even better maybe i'll recollect something what just happened yeah. you'll have to let me know if that happens but thank you so much for joining and thanks for everyone who stuck around and watched so peace out bye
if you like these types of videos, I highly recommend going and watching the past life regression I did with Duran, aka Dead Serious Investigations, where we pick apart a bunch of his past lives.